By popular demand, I'm today taking a look at my mining Python build, the Lancelot. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. I finished my Python mining build. Um, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I recently finished a cutter build and I decided to do kind of a medium version of that. It, it, it revolves around a lot of the same ideas that the cutter, but it has some advantages and of course also some disadvantages and we're going to go over it and we're also going to run through the build and then at the end of the video we're going to take it out and I'm going to show you what differs in the way you mine with a large heavy ship like the cutter and a more maneuverable ship like uh, the python here. So here we have it, the Lancelot. The name will make sense in a bit. And let's just quickly run through the uh, the modules, the upgrades, and where you can change things up if you want. Now, for this to work, at least the mining technique that I'm using with this, for this to work, I would say mining lances is almost a must-have. You get this through power play, it will take you four weeks if you don't have them, so it's it takes some time. But other than that, it's basically just a four-week wait, and then you get them from uh, from power play after you earn your merits in the last week. And the reason why we need this is because we are smaller, we're more maneuverable ship. We're going to try to do a lot more of that speed prospect that I talked about last time. I'm going to go into more detail with it later. But when you do that, you really need that extra range to get on the um, on the mining lances, um, two kilometer range compared to the 500 meters on a normal mining laser. So. On this specific build, I would definitely recommend it. If you want to go with a more slow build and go with a more slower prospecting build, then you can go and put uh, um, medium mining lasers here. We'll mine it slightly faster, but we'll have to change something in the optional internals then. But I'll come back to that later. Weapons here, you're pretty much free to do what you want. I decided to go with uh, with three beams, all with um, all with efficient and regeneration sequence. So mining in a fleet is going to be, um, be a breeze because, well, we can fight these lasers for a decent amount of time and we can heal our, our wing members. Um, you can change some of that for other weapons, obviously. Um, you can go with multi cannons if you want. I mean, we're pretty much mainly expecting to use these against NPCs, so lasers and multi cannons is probably one of the best and easiest to use combinations. Um, but I just went all beam lasers. And again, here you can pretty much mix and match whatever you want. The utility mounts here, um, all shield boosters, and we have two of them which are engineered with thermal resistant and super capacitor, and two of them have high, oops, that, that, that's all thermal, this one, has um, heavy duty and super capacitor as well. So, a good combination of shields and uh, and hit points here, or resistance and hit points here. Um, we're going to look at those hard stats a little bit later before we leave out and uh, take this off mining. Power plant is a little bit interesting here because I had a, quite a few options. I couldn't really make up my mind, but this is what I ended up with. I ended up keeping the 7A power plant modified with a grade 4 low emission and a monster. Rate. That gives me just enough power to keep this thing flying and deploy my weapons. What you could do instead, the reason why I do this is to try and keep the ship cold. So you can see here my current, um, my current uh, heat efficiency is very, very good. But what you could do if you wanted a, maybe you want some more jump range, you could definitely downgrade the power plant to maybe a 6 or 5. I'm not sure how far you could go, then go overcharged and go monstered also there. Maybe you go thermal spread if, if you can, can fit that as well there. Um, that should give you a little bit more jump range. Uh, again, that, that's a balancing act, what you, what you want to do. Um, so you have a little bit of option on the power plant there. Thrusters, um, we're going to be maneuvering, we're going to be needing our uh, as much speed as we can because we'll be flying with an open cargo scoop. So um, definitely uh, thrusters sex A with um, the standard um, dirty drive drag drives combination for uh, for good maneuverability. Frames of drive, no surprises here either. Long range mass management, it is a grade five, so deep charge can work as well. Life support, I believe this was just standard lightweight, um, so nothing there. Power distributor, um, Again, charge enhanced super conduit. We just don't need to keep that. Make sure we have the charge to keep the mining lasers and since uh, firing. And since I've gone with uh, with beam lasers, again, we need that high recharge so we can keep the beam lasers firing for longer. And sensors are of course lightweighted um, to again increase our jump range. And that's pretty much the the internals. So you can play a little bit around with the power plant, um, but the rest I think. Oh, of course the the life support is derated as well here to save even more weight. 
but the rest of it is pretty standard and what I would normally use. So let's move on to the optional internals here. In the class six slots, I fitted all cargo. Um, I find that to be the most efficient way to do it. Then a 5A shield generator, um, which I've engineered, if we go here, with reinforced shields and a high cap. You could go um, you could go prismatics here. I just didn't have a spare 5A prismatic, so I might have to sign up with the Duval again, um, just to get a, little, a few more of them. Um, but you could go prismatics. Of course, that would um, mean you couldn't go as cold, so you would have to get fewer um, few levels in your thermal spread on the uh, uh, on the power plant, so you get the power to actually power the uh, the prismatic shields. Um, so again, that's a little bit of a balancing act, but you could definitely do that and uh, with, without having um, too many issues, and it would give you a stronger tank. So you could consider that for. Um, for the rest of the slots here, I've gone, of course, used my Crest 4 with a 4A uh, refinery. Um, I mean, 4A refinery is definitely the best. 10 bin counts, definitely what we want. Um, so, yeah, I've gone with a 4A here. And then I've gone with a combination of collectors and prospectors. And this is where you can change it out a little bit depending on your laser loadout. If you're going uh, mining lances, I recommend just going with a 1A prospect Olympic controller. Engineered here for lightweight. All the limpet controllers are engineered for lightweight, by the way. Um, as you can see here. If you're going with mining lances where you have the longer range, you're going to be using your lasers to prospect, mainly using them. Um, that's going to be your main source of prospecting. So you don't need that big of a limpet, uh, prospecting limpet controller. So in that case, I would say a uh, 1A is just fine. Go with that. If you're using the normal mining lasers, I would probably get a 3A and then drop down uh, one of the collectors to a 1A here. Um, just to, to get that extra um, prospector so you can prospect two rocks at the same time because you're not going to be able to do the prospecting with the lasers as easily. So again, this is where you could change things up a little bit depending on your uh, laser loadout. You could even start having a 3A collect, uh, prospector and a 1A collector. And as you wait to get the lances, then what you get, you just swivel it around uh, uh, so you get the other one. Um, but this gives us a total of seven collectors and, of course, a single prospector. And um, and that's pretty much the uh, the loadout. Um, before we leave, we should just very quickly go and uh, and have a look at the statistics here. So we can see the shield. Um, 1,500 shield hit points and some decent resistance uh, across the board. Not too bad. I mean... It's not a combat ship, but it can definitely handle it itself in uh, in case you run into uh, to a pirate uh, out in one of the belts. So I'm gonna stock up on limpets, and we're gonna head out to uh, to a belt, and then we're gonna show you how this ship flies. Okay, here we are out in a uh, in a belt. Um, we have some police ships here, but that shouldn't be a problem. So what I would normally do when I'm out here and when we prospect with the lasers, so we basically. I showed it last time. We mine a single fragment, target the fragment, we look at what's in there. And some people pointed out in the last video, is yeah, sure, some fragments will contain um, up to um, three different materials, and I'm only going to see two of them. But the whole idea with this is that we're going to prospect the different rocks so quickly that overall it doesn't really matter if we miss one that might potentially have had something that we needed, um, because in the long run, we are going to be prospecting the rocks so much faster than if we were using uh, limpets that uh, it's going to make up for it anyway. So you can see, oh, see, there's some um, some palladium. We're going to look at the percentages, eight percent. That could potentially be good, be good. So I'm going to fire off a prospector to get the proper results. The idea is just to to really use your um, your maneuvering thrusters to go sideways here. So ten percent palladium. Normally, I would probably mine that, but for the purpose of the video here, we're just gonna we're just gonna move on so we can keep showing you the tactic. Um, so again, use your sideways thrusters here to. Uh, oh, that was quick. That fragment came out. Let's go mine a new one. There it is. Even more palladium on that one and gold. Okay, this is a very good rock. So I'll prospect that again, and I'll probably end up mining this rock. Two rocks, very good, close to each other. That's very nice. Um, and let's say that I've been sitting here and I've now mined this rock. Um, let's see what, it, what we got here. That's really good. That's a really good rock. So let's say that I've sit here, I've mined this rock, and my collectors are now collecting in the last uh, last fragments. And some people pointed out, why would you want the extra range? You want to move close anyway. Of course you do. As soon as you've got a rock that you want to mine, you want to move in nice and close 
and mine on the uh, lower half of the rock, so the fragments is pushed underneath your ship, making it easier for your collectors to pick them up. The only reason why we want that long range is because it allows us to use the, the lasers to prospect when we're moving around between the rocks, and using our side strafing thrusters here to, as we move past the rock, uh, scan it or, or shoot at it with the lasers. Once you're done with the rock and you're sitting, your collectors are doing their thing, um, I would just often sit and I would say, oh, I have a rock here in range, almost, there we go. So I could quickly just scan that or prospect that, see, mm, Osprey is okay, but not really looking for Osprey right now, maybe. So I could sit here and I could scan the rocks around me just by uh, using the lasers. And if I run out of rocks within range, and uh, so that's pure iron, so you would probably have to do that again to get a sample with something else in. There we go, Palladium and Platinium, also very good rock there. Um, so we could prospect that. If you then have nothing in range, then I would begin firing prospect Olympics at the rocks around me. But by then, but when you're done scanning all the rocks close to you, you should, um, your collectors should be done. Um, let's see with this rock. This is a very good rock. <laughs> Look at that though. That's not too bad. So, um, as you can see, you can prospect the, the rocks a lot quicker than if you have to wait for the prospect to go out by just flying past and shoot the rocks that you uh, that you uh, come past anyway you get within your range and just look at the fragments. And, and you can see here within a very short, I mean, this was a very lucky run, but normally I may feel like I'm able to collect the rocks a lot faster or find the good rocks a lot faster. So I can be a little bit more picky with what rocks I'm going to get, meaning that my cargo hold is going to be more valuable, which is of course going to make up for the um, slightly less uh, cargo that we have compared to a larger ship. But we are going to be able to prospect faster and locate those good rocks faster because we're more maneuverable. And um, you can see here, if I go uh, if I go full throttle here, we can go, I think, like 150 meters a second. Oh, actually 180. Wow. With our cargo hold open. So we can definitely put in some uh, some very, very respect spe respectable speed here for a mining ship. Um, but yeah. That's uh, that's the build. I am. Um, it's very different than compared to the um, to the cutter, at least the, in the field when you mine it. I I actually enjoy this a little bit more now uh, that I've tried it for a bit, um, simply because that moment of ability, the flying around, the prospecting is a lot more interesting than it is with um, with a cutter. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope that you found this video useful. Of course, there'll be a link in the in the description for the uh, for the ship build. If you like the video. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.